You know, um, Congressman, I'm interested in what happened to Rudy, uh, Rudy Giuliani. And some people say that he didn't uh, campaign when he should have, but I think it has something to do with the debate that you challenged him to on 9-11 and he failed to respond to. And I'm wondering if you can comment on that. Well, I, I don't know. That might have had a little bit to do with it. I don't think that was it. I think he uh, just didn't, didn't have the votes. But, uh, you know, he was rather challenging in one of the debates, and uh, that was one of those moments of ridicule that uh, took me a few minutes. Uh, it took me about five minutes later, and I remember my staff came up and said, you're winning the post-debate polls, so it, it didn't turn out so bad. But, you know, uh, and I, I talk about the mayor on occasion. I said, you know, uh, he, was, he was a front runner. What, for six months? Well, it turned out that we had probably four or five times more votes in the primary than he got. And uh, also, he has debt. He's paying off debt right now. And uh, I bet his T-shirts aren't selling all that well either. <laughs> yes, you mentioned the word change. And I, when I bought your book, I mean, that was the question I have. I mean, we've been hearing change from Obama. If you could confront Mr. Obama tomorrow, how would you pin him down when he uses that word change? Well, I, I probably wouldn't do it directly as much as I would go to his supporter if I, if I was addressing supporters of the audience. That um, ch change means nothing. It's just the word, and it's a cliche. And just to repeat it has no meaning. You have to say, what are you going to change? And I would argue, you offer no change. You have the same foreign policy. You want more troops in Afghanistan. You're not talking about only going to war with a declaration. You don't want to deal with the monetary financial crisis in this country. You want to keep, you know, the system together for the benefit of the banks and the big corporations and the politicians, you know, that argument. And what kind of change do you have on social policy? Do you care about sick people using marijuana? I mean, have you come out for that? You know, and I would just hit him hard on the fact that he doesn't want change, he wants the status quo. And uh, just saying it means nothing, but he has a lot of supporters. And the one time I was asked about, to comment about him, I actually tried to be, you know, fairly soft on him, but concluded that we have a lot of differences. But I, I, I tried to acknowledge that his supporters and my supporters have a lot of overlap, and they do. So in, in declaring what I just said, I think it has to be done in somewhat of a diplomatic manner, uh, and, and then to appeal to reason and say, look, if you want change, what you need is somebody that's going to make sure you're never going to have a draft, and that we're going to bring our troops home, we're going to balance the budget, we're going to have sound money. He never talks about any of that. <laughs> well, no, he'll be, he probably doesn't have real solid beliefs. He will be converted when we convert his young people. That's what will convert. The, the, pol the, politicians in the politicians in Washington don't have much philosophy, probably never will, but that's all right. That's why we have a chance by converting people's hearts and minds, and that's where we've made our progress. Uh, hey, Dr. Paul. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on your reception internationally, especially in the Arabic world. A little closer and a lot. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on your reception internationally, especially in the Arabic world. Especially where? Uh, in the Arab world. Arab? Yeah. Uh, well, probably there may be some people who are on the internet more than I am. Uh, I might even have better, more positive answers. All I think is it's been very good. And indirectly, I know it's pretty good uh, because I guess there were a lot of groups around the world. I had an invitation just recently of, of a group that wanted me to do a tour of Eastern Europe. And because there was a group of meetup groups, and would you come and make six or seven stops in Eastern Europe? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> you know? And in the middle, no, I guess right before this campaign started, uh, you know, I don't travel much because one thing is I, I don't do junkets. And I don't like airplanes for 15 hours either. But when I had the invitation to go over to Prague to celebrate the translation of human action 
into, uh, into Czech. And, you know, I went there. And, of course, uh, Klaus, the president there, was on the podium as well. So things are happening in Eastern Europe and around the world. And I've seen some very good things in the, uh, the Arab community here has been, uh, in the Muslim community here in this country have spoken out strongly for me. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe others would know more details about exactly what's going on in the, in the Arab countries. But I do know, back to the issue of Israel, I think we had a meetup group in Israel too. And, uh, and, and it, to me, that's always so sad because here we're not allowed to say some things, but even in Israel, they allow a little bit of debate. You know, liberals are allowed to say it, but not here. You know, you don't say anything. But maybe um, J Street will help us on that, uh, you know, to balance that argument. But the whole thing is, is our argument on that is absolutely right. Uh, we don't discriminate against anybody, uh, and we don't want to discriminate against our people. And that is, uh, we treat everybody the same way, and we treat our people here at home by giving them national offense, but not getting ourselves into wars that we don't need. We have room, uh, time for one more question. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paul, just a very simple question. How do we get 535 Dr. Pauls in Congress? <laughs> well, you're not, you're not going to. You know what would make me ecstatic is if we uh, had three or four. <laughs> but you, we, we, could turn, we could really have an impact. Just like I told you about the uh, time that I took the 20 minutes and I was alert to what was happening uh, on, uh, on in, uh, the Iraqi Liberation Act. But if we had three or four of us, we could sit down there on days of, uh, of suspensions and all the junk that they bring up that they don't fully debate. And then I get over there and I look at it and, you know, it's always sounding good. But the last line says, well, if you don't do what we tell you, we're going to bomb you, you know, that kind of stuff. So, no, I, I think... Uh, to get more, to get more people in Congress. I mean, I think the time is right for more people running. And this is one outcome that was never planned, never thought of. The precinct organizations are, are, are blooming and growing. The meetup groups are there and they're deciding uh, who they're going to support. And, and I think that's going to continue. Uh, whether it will get you a bunch this year, I don't know. But I think we're a lot further along now than we have been a long time. Uh, People are noticing us, and like I pointed out, it's not the typical Republican. It's across the board. I was entertained yesterday. I was talking to John Conyers. I don't think he has a Republican district, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, like the inner city of, Mich of Detroit or something like that. And he came up to me, and he, he was, and I, I, I've known him since I was in before, 20 years or so. We probably haven't said anything. He probably didn't know my name before a year ago. But uh, he comes up and he's been talking to me. He came over and he was chatting with me. He says, Ron, he says, I don't know what's going on. You have more darn signs in my district than anybody. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, but he followed up. He says, it's almost like a movement. <laughs> Join the movement. Thank you. <laughs>